that kind of attention from you. Oh yes, friends. You know you want her. You know you love her. You want to get to know her better. Thing is, if you make the wrong move on this one, she'll probably do more than shoot you the cold shoulder. She's the all-star treasure hunter of the 90s. Likened to a female Indiana Jones with good looks as well as sublime skill with all types of weaponry. Fighting against all odds to recover the fabled Scion. No, not, a, not the car that looks like a box. But an ancient artifact fabled to grant its possessor untold power. Yes, Lara Croft exploded onto the gaming stage in an adventure that spawned not only a ridiculously popular video game series, but comic books, novels, theme park rides, and films starring Pillow Lips Jolie. Although nowadays it's British gymnast Alison Carroll who has taken control of the portrayal of the Lara Croft throne. But if you backtrack from the glitz and glamour and find yourself at the point of the fictional British archaeologist's origin, You'll know that it was thanks to developers Core Design, publishers IDOS Interactive, and gamers all across the world that brought her to the big time through Tomb Raider, shown here on the PlayStation platform. So just how successful is the Lara Croft and Tomb Raider phenomenon? Well, according to the June 1997 edition of Newsweek magazine, a year before Tomb Raider was released, IDOS had recorded $2.6 million in pre-tax loss. Thanks to their creation, that loss turned into a $14.5 million profit. Yow. Tomb Raider is a third-person shoot-'em-up, yes, but it goes so much further than that. And when a video game transcends the console and becomes a worldwide phenomenon, especially with Lara Croft as a pop culture icon, you know that you have something truly special. Say what you will about the objectification of Lara as a female with a killer body, but the fact is, she may have been the first time that many gamers turned away from the strictly male perspective of the video game world and made teenage boys believe that even the girls can kick some ass too. Hell, in an age where Buffy shares the stage with Lara and the teenage nerds daydream during second period physics class, it should come as no surprise. Okay, okay, so the gameplay. Lara has control of pistols, shotguns, and Uzis to blow away the various predatory animals that lurk around each stage, but success in Tomb Raider lies in Lara's incredible acrobatic and mental skill through trick jumps and puzzle solving. Oh, and handstands. Yeah. I like handstands. <clears throat> anyway, the relatively floaty control to Tomb Raider will often be the cause of a lot of cursing at your television screen, but once you get enough gameplay in, you'll be able to feel your way through the multi-tiered stages that can be somewhat confusing, to be kind. Nonetheless, there's nothing like the feeling of getting past that obstacle you took about an hour to overcome. Pre-rendered cinematics that show up between stages will guide you through the plot of Tomb Raider and truly show you the style and flair that Lara has, as compared to her male opponents that try to stop her from foiling the plans of Natla Technologies, headed by business bigwig Jacqueline Natla, and their plot to exploit the ancient ruins of Atlantis for evil. In short, play through this game and you'll understand entirely why Lara Croft's popularity knows no bounds. You probably won't know why you too used her as eye candy for their Pop Mart tour, but you will know why, in today's male-dominated video game fanbase, why it's not only okay, but kind of cool to be the girl.